Space Jam is that kind of movie that sometimes has you ask the question, how on earth did such a crazy idea like Michael Jordan playing basketball with Bugs Bunny ever manage to get greenlit? But that's exactly what makes it such a fun movie anyway. It's that kind of film you can remember fondly, even if you don't necessarily appreciate it in the same way as an adult. It may feel outdated now, but you loved it as a kid, and that's all that matters. Now with most 90s kids movies, there was normally a video game adaptation. I used to really love this game, but does it still hold up today? Let's find out. So you select play game and you get the option to play as the Looney Tunes or the Monstars. Now I assume most people would want to start off playing as the Looney Tunes, because who doesn't want to play as Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan! He is the highest ranking player, so he is my first choice as the team captain. The second highest is Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. And then of course, it's Lola, right? <laughs> Wrong! Surprisingly, the Tasmanian Devil is equally ranked with Bugs Bunny, making him superior to Lola. But that's a little bit weird, right? I thought the entire point behind Lola's character in the movie was that she was amazing at basketball. You sort of expect her to be the second best player after Michael Jordan, but instead, they made it Bugs and Taz. I get why they did that with Bugs because he's, you know, Bugs Bunny. But why isn't she in the top three? After you select your players, you don't start a basketball match right away but rather with a mini game where you play as Daffy Duck. The object is to collect Michael Jordan's uniform from his house while avoiding floor obstacles, a nerd luck, and Michael's dog. This is known as a sub-level. It's one of the many other sub-levels you can play between matches. I remember enjoying these more than the basketball because to be honest, I found the matches just a little too easy. Sure, they're fun to begin with, but I often found myself stuck in this monotonous cycle where one team scores then the other team scores. You score, then they score, then you score, then they score, over and over. I don't know, maybe I'm just rubbish. To avoid this from happening, the idea is that you're meant to push over your opponent so that they drop the ball and you can steal it. But I find it so difficult to do most of the time. There are moments like this where I'm almost certain I'm in direct contact with them, but nothing happens. It's like you have to be accurate to the pixel or something. I mean, the Monstars rarely managed to push me either, but that's the whole point. It's just not challenging. Another annoying thing I just noticed is whenever the other team scores, the team captain is automatically designated to inbound the ball, which resumes the match. What's wrong with this, you ask? Well, you would think most people playing this game would pick their favorite player first, like I did with Michael. But the thing is, I'm not even playing as Michael most of the time. He's always the guy on the sidelines passing the ball to one of the other teammates. Yes, I could just pass it back to Michael, but sometimes it doesn't go straight to him because I seem to only pass to whichever one of my teammates is closest to me. And look here, since Michael is so fast, when he runs off, he's the furthest away. And I don't want to waste my time with that, because once I have the ball, I just want to leg it down to the other end of the court so I can make my next dunk. Great move! So what I'd recommend is before you start the match, pick your least favorite player as the team captain. It doesn't even matter if they've got the worst stats. You're probably never going to be playing as them anyway. One odd thing I would like to mention is how they programmed the two-player feature. At the start of the game, when you're choosing your team, you can plug in a second controller and player two has the option to play against you or play with you on your team. I tried this one out. In this mode, player one chooses the first two characters, while player two chooses the third. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Now here's the weird part. Along with team captain, player one controls the character player two selected, while player two controls the second character player one selected. I mean, what's up with that? I mean, somebody, please, explain this to me. Moving on to the sub-levels. In this one, you play as Bugs Bunny, where you have to collect water bottles, Michael's secret stuff. What you do is you check all the lockers while avoiding the weapons the nerd luck throws at you to slow you down. If you're playing as the Monstars, though, this sub-level is slightly different. Before you start, it says, Use the essence to touch and steal all of the talent from that overpaid crybaby. You've only got a little time, so avoid that meddling tune. Good luck. Right, so it seems that you control this floating purple gas or whatever, which the game refers to as the essence, and all you need to do is hover over this guy as he runs around the locker room. That's it. I pressed some buttons in the process, but wasn't really sure if it was doing anything. By the end, I ranked a pretty high score, and it was effortless. Here we have Hall of Hijinks, where you play as Lola. 
or bupkis if you're playing as the Monstars. It's basically like a shooting gallery at a fun fair, but with basketballs. I really like this one, particularly because of how satisfying it is to hear the sound effects when you score. Oh yeah. That is, of course, if I ever manage to successfully pick up a ball. See, look, I'm just running around desperately trying to pick one up, but I just can't seem to manage. There, finally. I did so badly in this round, it's insane. Although I'm not too far behind, considering. You know, it just occurred to me that I should probably check the difficulty settings. Most games are set to medium by default, so I assume this would be too. Oh, hey, look at that. I've been playing on easy mode this whole time. Well, after switching it to hard mode, there's definitely a noticeable change. It's not too difficult now by any means, but it is more challenging, particularly in the sub-levels. Like in the Daffy one, I'm just getting continuously ripped apart by the dog because now he moves a lot faster. The basketball matches are harder, sure, but not by much. Take a seat. You get your shots blocked more often, but your teammates will be pushing and shoving your opponents more often too. Take a seat. Which certainly helps, seeing as I'm so poor at doing it myself. With authority. Next, we have Space Race. This one is a lot of fun, especially as it feels very similar to the game Asteroids. The object of the game is to outrun your opponent until they are off screen, which makes them explode, and your points bar goes up. Do this a few more times, aiming to get the most points. This one is Shootout. You shoot the ball into the basket, trying to get the most points before the timer runs out. The further back you shoot from, the more points you score. But if you shoot from the bonus ring, you get double the points. But despite its simplicity, I enjoy the sub-level the most for two reasons. Number one, the music's just awesome. And number two, I kind of like the way the guy says bonus every time you score a bonus point. Bonus! 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 To summarize, even though I enjoy the sub-levels more, they are essentially not that much different from playing on a phone app nowadays. It is definitely more of a kid's game, but I do find it nostalgic. And although it has not aged well, it will always hold a special place in my heart as one of my favorite games of my childhood. What can't he do?